What is going on warriors and farmers of Tamaris? Welcome back to another Call of Dragons video. In today's episode, we're gonna check out one of the most complete heroes in the whole game. This video is gonna show you the guide for Thea in the Call of Dragons. Make sure that you subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet already. Turn on that bell notification and never miss out. Like the video, share it with your friends. Leave some comments down below. Let's get the video started. Alright Warriors of Tamaris, there are so many heroes in the Call of Dragons and you're never gonna find a hero that has a near complete skill kit like Thea in the game. So we're gonna check out the skill kit for Thea and then we're gonna look at some artifacts and we're gonna look at the pairings that you can use with this hero. Now right now if you are a free to play player or you are new in the game, you should make sure you try and work on this hero and get her to a high level as fast as possible, she is going to be doing a lot for you in the open field. The good thing is that she is a flying hero and she is overall, you can use her in any faction with any of the flying troop types in the game. Like I said, you're never going to find a hero with a near perfect skill kit like Thea. So let's go over the skills and see what makes this hero so awesome for the open field. Starting off with the rage skill, it says grants a shield to two nearby friendly legions, including Thea's legion that absorbs a large amount of damage for 5 seconds, shield factor 1000. Thea's legion also gains synergy, increasing hero skill damage dealt by 15%, ends when a rage skill is cast. So if we go to the awakening, before the awakening, you only have a shield for yourself. So there is no need to awaken this hero. If you are a free to play player, you are going to enjoy using this hero. Now Thea is going to provide you with a 1000 shield that's going to absorb a lot of counter attack damage. It's going to help you last very very long in the open field. Now some of you just look at heroes who do skill to other enemies. But if you try to pick Thea, this 1000 shield factor is going to help you against counter attack. On to the second skill is known as Oracle's Grace. While in the field, Thea's legion's attack is increased by 15% and they take 15% less hero skill damage. Now this is just fantastic. In the open field, you have heavy hitters like the mages, you have the Velin, you have the Walder, you have the Lilia, you have Kinara, you have so many heroes that are gonna hit you with skill damage. And Thea is gonna reduce that by 15%. This is just fantastic. Skill number three, Purging Wind. Thea's legion gains 20% defense. When her legion is composed entirely of flying units, their attack is increased by 10% and their march speed is increased by 20%. As you can see here, now you have a defense bonus of 20%. This is going to be very very good on your mages. Magic units have the highest defense in the whole game. So let's go to the training camp and then you see the defense of magic units. So we're gonna click the Vestals and we go over here as you can see magic defense of 229. Now let's compare that to the magic defense of infantry. As we know the unit advantage system makes mages very good at killing infantry. As you can see here infantry only has magic defense of 187. So when you have someone like Thea with your Celestials or your magic Vestals, your defense is gonna be insane. When you fight other mages as well you are gonna have a fantastic magic defense which can help you. You have the likes of Velin who can do magic defense break. So your Thea is gonna help boost you big time. On to skill number four known as the Lex Lucis. When Thea's legion gains a shield their attack is increased by 10% up to a maximum of 30%. This is one of the coolest skills available for Thea in the game right now. Let me explain to you how this skill works in the open field. When you gain your first shield from the rage skill, you get a 10% attack which is going to last for the remainder of the match. When you get your next shield, you get 20% and when you get your third shield, you get 30%. So if you play with Thea alone with your other pairing, I believe it's going to take you almost 30 seconds to get this to 30% because your first shield will come maybe at 10 seconds, next one at 18 or 20 something seconds and then the third shield in the 30th second. So that is a very very long time. There is a way you can mitigate this problem with one of the skills from the warpet. It's known as the heart wall. And if you look at the mages, they also have a skill that provides them with a shield. So you're going to be able to get this 30% within the first 15 seconds of the match, helping you do a lot of damage. 
Now moving on to the awakening, you just go from one shield to two shields, which is just awesome. So as a free to play player, what you should do is max out the first skill, max out the second one, and then unlock the remaining two. When you distribute your points, just hope they go to skill number four and take it all the way up to five. So you get the 30% attack damage, which is going to help you in the open field. Now, if you have something like five, five, one, five, that's going to be excellent. With just one point here, you get a defense bonus of 10%, march speed of 10% with flying unit, attack bonus of 4% with flying units, which is just great. The one thing that makes Taya very, very good in the open field is that if you combine all of this attack, you're going to get an attack value of 55% for your flying units. This is just awesome. So you're going to take this 55% attack damage and you're going to boost the base statistics of your heroes. Now this is going to help you do good normal attack and it's going to help you with plenty of counter attack. And the good thing is Thayer is very, very defensive. He's going to make you last long in the field and then you're going to do a lot of damage in the process. Let us check out some awesome war pets that you can use with Thea in the open field. The good thing is she's an overall hero which means you can use her with any troop type in the game and you have the potential to use any war pet available on the list that we have right now. If you're using mages you're gonna go with the Sapphire Phaedric. The one good thing with Thea is that you need to put the heart wall ability on any war pet that you pair up with Thea. 10% chance to grant legion a shield every second. Shield factor blah 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 determined by endurance can be triggered once every eight seconds you can get a zero star and just put it here just to trigger the fourth skill of Thea so with that skill you're going to be able to maximize this 30 percent within the first 15 seconds and it's going to last for the duration of the match helping you do plenty of damage if you're pairing up there with Ferondil you're going to go with the Bazaka Phaedric just make sure you put heart wall skill here if you're gonna pair Thea with archers like Frega, you're gonna put this Night Rock. Make sure you put a Heart Wall ability here to use with the Thea. So these are the ones you can use with Thea. You can also try this new pet known as the Shadow Phaedric. You also put the Heart Wall if this is what you wanna use. You also have the Golden Rock. If you wanna fly up in the sky, you can also use this one with Forondil. Make sure you have the Heart Wall ability here to help out with the Lex Lucis. Up next, we're gonna check out some best pairing for Thea in the Call of Dragons. She is a flying hero, which means you can use her with any flying troop type in the game. So let's start off with the flying troops in the game and see who are the best to pair up with Thea. If you are in the Spring Warden faction, you're gonna be using Thea and Forondil. Now, if you have seen so many whales in this game, when they go out with their Forondil and Thea, they come back with a lot of merits. Who do you think is the catalyst for all of those merits? It is Thea. She's gonna give you 55% attack, which is gonna boost the base statistics of your heroes. And then she's gonna give you some defense. She's gonna help you last long when you go and destroy people on the field. So Thea and Forondil for the Forest Eagles. And then you have Thea and Frega for the Flying Archers. And then we're going to talk about one of the coolest open field marches in the game. It is hands down Lilia and Thea. I know a lot of you don't want to agree with this, but you just have to take this pairing out for a spin and see for yourself. If you look on paper, you're going to go with Lilia and Velin 100%. But if you go and test it out on the open field, you are going to bench Velin and use him with Walter. And you're going to be using Lilia and Thea. I dare you to go and try it and see what happens. Just go and try it. You're going to like it. So how is this going to be very, very good in the open field? So Thea is going to give Lilia 15% rage skill boost. She's going to reduce all the hero skill damage taken. She's going to bring 55% attack for the Celestials. Now Lilia is going to bring 20% magic attack bonus. You combine that with... 55 from Thea, you get 75% magic attack, which is just great. Another good thing is Lilia bring magic unit HP of 10%. And Thea here already has 20% defense. So when we go to the training camp, we look at the Celestials. It's like you have boosted every single statistics just by adding Lilia and Thea together. 
you get some nice defense you get a fantastic attack you get fantastic hp it means you're going to be doing a lot of damage through counter attack through normal attack you will last long in the field you're going to last longer than lilia and velin and you're going to do a lot of damage you just have to try this march in the open field for yourself and you will see you're going to see how you print so many merits it's going to be surprising if it comes in a one-on-one -on -one fight like Lilia and Velin versus Lilia and Thea, the Lilia and Velin might win. But when it comes to group fight, open field group fight, where there are multiple people, this march is something else. It's a powerhouse. You don't want to miss out. What other pairings can we do here? You can obviously pair this hero with infantry as well. Just put her behind one of your infantry heroes. And right now we have Bertrand in the game. It's going to be a nasty flying march in the open field. Costea has a 55% attack. And then you have Bertrand who is going to give you another 40% attack. Giving it 95% attack. It might be able to print more merits than Elilia and Athea. We just have to wait and see. We're going to see some testing pretty soon when the pass is open and people start fighting. You can also pair up Thea with... Atheist, this is what people have been doing. It is a proven march. It gets so much merit as well. It is overall fantastic. So these are some of the good pairs for the game. You shouldn't underestimate Thea in the Call of Dragons. The 55% attack she brings is just awesome. You want march speed, she got it. Hero skill damage reduction taken, no problem. Attack damage, no problem. You want a shield to help you with counter attack, she got you covered. You want to help one of the nearby marches that is near you? Well, she's going to give you a shield that's going to prevent them from taking counter attack. This is just awesome. Let us check out a talent tree that you can use for Thea in the game. I wouldn't recommend using Thea as a primary because there are so many good primary heroes that you can use with Thea. She is overall hero, so you're going to have to adjust your talent tree to match the troop types that you use with the hero. Now, if you're using mages, you can use Bertrand as a primary with the skill talent tree. If you are using Farondil, you can use the control or whatever you want to use with Farondil. You also have Prega that you can use as a primary. But if you're persistent and you want to use Thea as a primary, this is something that you might want to try. Take advantage of the PvP talent tree and the overall talent tree. As you can see here, I decided not to go in the full trees because the remaining points are not so excellent. Let's check out the PvP talent tree. If you look over here, this stubborn fighter, it says when your legion is in the field and their unit count is less than 50%, they deal this amount of damage. So what are you doing fighting with a less than 50% troop capacity? You just go back and refresh your troops. And the last point, bridge blade also happens every 30 seconds, which is kind of long time. It's okay, but you can mitigate all of these problems. When you come to the overall talent tree, again, the last point here is just dependent on the troop type that you use. You can still go with emergency triage where you reduce severely wounded units in your legion by probably 10%. But if you look at the last skills here, like this one right here, which is awesome, Conard Cut. When your Legion's unit count is less than 50%, they deal 2% more damage. Most of the time, when you go to below 50%, you just go back and refresh your troops and come back fresh. So this is the talent tree that I have, the foundational talent. You pick this, grab this, grab the HP, take this skill over here. Going to the overall, you have overall health. You can take attack. Thea already has 20% attack. If you're using Celestials, you get 20% attack. If you're using other flying units, you get 20% attack. If you're using non-flying units, you can swap and go with the overall speed. Now here is going to depend on what you want to use. If you're using Frega, you go with Adrenaline Rush. If you're using Forondil or Bertrand, you might want to take Intimidation. Add these two nodes, you can go with the Guardian Angel, which is going to give you 4% less damage taken every 10 seconds when you enter battle. In the PvP, you're always going in and out, in and out. You can trigger this thing so many times, giving you 4% reduced damage, which is great. Or you can go with this and get 4 additional rage with every normal attack that someone hits you with. Sometimes you fight and you're not taking any damage, so this thing is going to be a waste. However, 
if you go with the guardian angel you can reduce the amount of counter attack that you take especially if no one is targeting you and then over here you have the unrelenting fury when your legion gains a buff effect they gain 15 rage so you're gonna be gaining a lot of rage with this skill now you shouldn't underestimate this emergency triage as well so make sure you have some points remaining if you want to drop it here now i stopped on the unrelenting fury from this overall talent tree and then we came to the pvp tree we grab attack we grab a normal attack because you know Thea has 55 percent attack damage that means it's gonna boost the base statistics of your hero helping you do more normal attack and more counter attack if you're using other non-flying legions you can go for the overall speed now over here you can decide and take the skill damage to boost the skill of your primary hero i mean of your deputy or you can go with this skill over here head held high as you can see i had two points left i just decided to drop them here you can decide and remove the five points from here put them here take this one to five and then the remaining two points bring them and dump them here in emergency triage or triage and then you come and grab this attack army of valor you're gonna take this counter attack with you as you know thea is gonna make your march very very tanky the longer you last the more counter attack damage you do and you have 55 percent more attack which is gonna boost your base statistic and just help you do lots of counter attack in the process as well and then you have the strength to strength your legion deals 1.5 percent more damage this is the talent tree that I would use for Thea in the open field. I completely ignored the support talent tree. If you are still persistent and you want to try the support talent tree, you can grab this. Come over here. You grab some head health high. Get some rage if you want or else you can go with the adrenaline rush. Now this one increases your legions healing granted. You're not getting any healing so I don't see how this is going to be helpful right now. Over here you have three defense statistics but you can go with this one to increase your shield where is it increases your legion shield granted by five percent and then here you grab the force field it gets some hp yeah i think this force field is better over here you can grab the skill damage intimidation to boost your deputy and then you come here and you grab strength to strength your legion deals 1.5 percent more damage at level five and then you're gonna come here and grab egoism your legion takes 0.8% less hero skill damage now you want to avoid sublimation every time never ever pick this skill when launching a normal attack your legion has a 10% chance to gain synergy increasing their hero skill damage dealt by 2% for 5 seconds now this synergy is gonna interfere with the synergy of Thea from her raid skill so instead of getting 15% you're gonna get this mediocre 10% from here. So make sure you never ever pick this skill. It is going to overwrite your Thea synergy from the rage skill. And then you come over here, you grab this. When your Legion gains a buff effect, they also gain healing. Healing factor 150. This can be triggered once every 10 seconds. So this is how I would build the support talent tree overall. This is what I would use for my Thea in the open field. I don't use her as a primary. She is just a deputy. So that's it guys. This is the talent tree that I like to use. Up next, we're going to go over some artifacts that you can use with this hero when we hit replace. If you're using mages, you have the Phoenix Eye. You can use, you have this thing right here. You can use, there are so many artifacts that you can use with Thea. It just depends on the person that you pair up, you pair with her. You have Infernal Flame for Lilia. That's going to be awesome. And then you also have this new artifact here known, the, known as the Mirage Orb. This is going to be great. You have the awesome Breath of Yargentis. That's another good one. Now you can just use any magic thingy you have here, which is going to help you big time. So yep, so I think that's it for the video, guys. These are the pairings for the Thea in the Call of Dragons right now. I use Lilia and Thea. It's one of my best marches in the game. I know a lot of you still don't agree. On paper, you're going to miss out. You're going to be like, I want to be using Lilia and Velin. On paper, it is the best. But in the open field, when you do some testing, you will be surprised at what these two can do for you in the open field. 
and make sure you take advantage of Lex Lucy's free to play 5515. You're good to go. Also, don't forget this artifact. I mean, don't forget this warped skill. Lex Lucy's, you're gonna need it. Thank you guys for watching. If you're new here, make sure you subscribe for more content, turn on that bell notification, and never miss out. Until then, talk to you guys in the next video. Bye bye for now.